Okay, okay, what is really good here? I don't know why did that show for intro. Yeah, we got Ricardo versus Obliviate for OUPL week one. Ricardo rocking that Kieran Roll Corona squad. So, so we have Obliviate on the other side using a Mega Alakazam. Let me try to figure out the sets. Kelly is probably the Scarf or <laughs> it could be Scarf Gengar too. Now Scarf Kelly is way more common. I feel for Volcarona. Like Gengar can't oak or Volcarona, right? Oh uh, yeah, Volcarona puts in a lot of work. I feel like Volcarona can win this game for sure. So I assume it's either Zemo Volk or Charlie Berry, shout out to ABR. <laughs> So obviously Rock's guard jump. Uh, it could also be Rock's Mew, I guess, on Ricardo's team. Tangrowth is a good lead. Like Tangrowth pretty much led off fine versus the entire team. I mean, Spec Sludge Wave would do a hell, like would do super, <laughs> would do five million, but. Like, I assume it's AB Tangros, right? AB Tangros, um, defensive scissor for Metagross. Metagross is still allowed. This is, uh, it's in suspect at the moment, but it's allowed in this tour, I'm pretty sure. So, like, these specs are like, I think he goes, yeah, he went scissor in case he went for a spec sludge wave. I can understand that play. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can basically U turn out for free scout if it's helmet or AV tank. It's not helmet. That didn't do that much, that U turn is. So yeah, 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 I see it's leftovers tangos. It's not AV, I was about to say. I think U turn has a bit more to AV tank. So this might be mixed defensive tangos with leech seed. I think that set is meant to check Metagross type of Coco like it. It's like mixed defenses, so we can also take uh, type of Coco on kind of. Sleep Forest the Curum. Mm -hmm. You can go back into Scissor here. Tangos can't touch the Scissor. There's no way Obliviate is staying in here. So if I'm Obliviate, I go into like. Either Kelio, I either go to Kelio or I go to. Uh, depending on the sets, like Gengar is also an option here. If it's really specs. So we know that the tank was mixed defensive, but I still think the Magina has to be a solver on this team to take on. Greninja or Ash Greninja. Okay, he went Landorus, gets up rocks, and HPS is gonna bop this. I mean, I understand wanting to get up rocks because there's a Volcoron and a Kyurem, but. I feel like Gengar. Okay, I said Kelly. Kelly wouldn't have done anything there because he went into tank. Yeah, Gengar would have worked out a bit better there. So, Obliviate basically has to pressure Rokara now that he doesn't get up the defog for free. It's gonna U turn out here, I assume. Okay, hard switch. Maybe he's maybe he's the. No, he's not left over Slender. He didn't want to U turn in case. I don't know. In case they both handle the tank, was potentially, yeah. I don't know if it's revealed yet. I don't think this Tangos took any damage, so it's not a revealed yet. If it's but uh, Helmet Tangos runs uh, HP Fire sometimes. Like, I don't know if it runs HP Fire every time, but HPS is more on AV Tangos. More common. Yeah, it was my gear now. Um, I thought Ricardo would have gone for a knockoff there, but playing it safe. Going for HPS is understandable, and we see it's a uh, leftover from Vienna, which is interesting. 
And he obviously votes, which is there, because he cannot let the scissor come in for free and give him just give him the default. So I feel like this might be the Benge set. Paint with Magina. Like leftovers are kind of nice to have a Magina for longevity. The Assault set kind of gets worn down. Like it doesn't have recovery, and now it, it can come in on Greninja like one or once or twice. But yeah, with leftovers, you can bring it in on like double switches because leftovers back. Or just like if you switch it on like weaker moves from Greninja like Ice Beam, you can just heal that off with like two or three turns of leftovers. And yeah, with Pain Split you can also. If you are like 30%, you can still live a hit potentially and Pain Split it back. I assume it's that sad. So uh, this screams that he's HP Fire Alakazam. Unless he just wants to fire off a Thunder Wave. So I assume we're gonna see Garchomp play, yeah, exactly. Um, you would've also been an option. But yeah, Garchomp makes sense on the HP fire. If that would've been HP ice, I don't know what I would've... That would've been wild, but yeah, it's obviously HP fire. And this uh, Scarf Chomp probably can Oko Alakazam. I don't know, the, I haven't made the call, I haven't run the call, but I assume it can Oko. Because uh, Megazam or just... It's not really bulky on the fifth left side. So the Tangros is pretty obvious here. If this guard jump has rocks, I mean he could go for rocks, but on the other side he kinda has to default for his Volcoron and cure him, so there's not really a point in doing that. So mm, I guess he can double into scissor here breaking the Tangros. If the Tangros doesn't have HP fire, he um gets a default. Did he double his scissor? Okay, didn't. So I feel like Oblivion will um go for Leech Seed here. If he has it. Or he will double up breaking the scissor, because like I said, he doesn't want to let that get the defog off. So like I, I would have considered doubling the scissor the turn before, but just drain glowing is fine, I guess. In case he goes Landorus. Yeah, he could have stacked the lander potentially. Now he wants to keep the landers around, because there's still the potential that Ricardo can defog, so he wants to have the lander and set up rocks again. Okay, what happened? He went to Mew. He went into Mew on a Tangros, he didn't go Scissor, so fearing an HP Fire potentially. Fearing HP Fire Tangros. Uh, Gotta Willow was one of the that gets a slow Volt switch out on the Gengar. Gengar can um, fire off a Shadow Ball here. Uh, so I'm thinking of a Z move Gengar, right? Like, either it's Z move Gengar or it just doesn't have a Z move on his team. Because I think it has to be Scarf Kill, you know? Yeah, okay, that's. That did a good chunk. I don't know if that's specs. They did a little bit too little to be specs, I feel. Mm, I'm curious, I wanna run a call. Probably just Scarf Gal, Z move Gal, he didn't use the Z move. I still think it's Scarf Kelly, so it has to be like Zenith Gar or like something else. It's a knockoff on the. Like, knockoff was fine there. Knockoff would have got, basically gotten rid of an item or it would have. Um, I don't know if it would have killed the Gengar, but it would have done a lot to Gengar. Like, if it's Zenith Gengar, maybe it could have lived it. But yeah, let me run the card real quick. But I um, think that's uh, not Specs damage. Gengar versus uh, Tangrove. Oh, you assault vest. Uh, Shadow Ball is 23 to 27. So, yeah, that's uh, specs damage then. I guess I'm bad. I need to put a choice specs in here. Yeah. I messed up the card. Like, I messed up. My head card was wrong. That is specs, Gengar. Okay. It does 35 to 41. I just thought that I underestimated Tangles. Okay, he's playing on his phone. Oh, he's not in the battle. I think he can't join the battle. That's like some DC problems and smoke. Mm -hmm. But you can't click a movie. We have had that y happen yesterday, I think. You have to join the battle from the lobby, like open smoke. Just okay, okay, let me pause real quick. Oh, let me um 
talk about potential plays here. So yeah, he's gonna um, probably go for a slow volt switch here. The only the um, like Ricardo can uh, try to block a slow volt switch by going a guard jump, but I don't know if it's worth risking the guard jump here. Cause this set could have ice beam. I think the set runs ice beam volt switch paint split, and then floor cannon or floor cannon or sphere. So maybe I'll try to make a double switch here that covers all options, but he just makes the volt switch play. Okay, so we know it's Spike's Gengar now since I ran the Kalk. Oh, thankful, thankfully I ran the color because <laughs> my head color was completely wrong. Yeah, if you like, you can just click Shadow Ball here. Pretty sure, might be a roll on the. It might be a, yeah, it's a roll. I think to tweet kill the tank roll. Yeah, we will see if he gets the, the truth kill. Yeah, okay, that's... Uh, 20, 42 is a high roll. If he got min damage, the Tangles could have lived. Like, if he got a 35, 35 roll. But yeah, this was pretty much an Olivier's favor, so never mind, yeah. Like, there was a little... Really, really slow chance of the Tangles living only. So yeah, he basically either has to sack the Tangles or... Um, let something else take a huge hit. Like Scissor will get blown away. That's not the play. Hume is a sleep fodder, so he kinda wants to keep a sleep fodder. Tangerus is nice to have in this matchup. It's nice for kill Leo. So he just has to take the Kyurem, okay? Like it's gonna get to it KO. It's a sleep, but I don't think it burned a sleep turn. Yeah, 56, but god. So if it, it obviously could have been Z-move Kyurem, but Volk is uh, kind of likely to be Z-move. He goes back to Scarf, Chomp, and I feel like this time he's going to make the double on the Tangros. Like this Gengar is pretty good for Oblivion. It comes in on stuff like Mew and basically gets a kill. So yeah, he makes the double pretty clean the Tangros, which is was about to be expected eventually and now you can get a defog and hope it's um this tangles can just go for sleep powder here because he lost his uh, he misses the sleep powder which sucks he lost his uh, sleep powder earlier and second the curum and now ricardo has to try and play the way that the uh, landers doesn't get the rocks back up basically so volcorona can put in work volcorona can set up on mcgirna it can set up on Potentially on Tangros if if he has put something to sleep already and I don't think this Tangros would have rock slide. So yeah, Magina Tangros are like the two setup targets as he went for a knockoff there, probably predicting a U-turn into Mew. Or so, uh, predicting this is out of switch into something. If he's just spamming bullet punch, he wants to sleep for this, but <laughs> Oblivion refuses to go for it. Okay, this time that sleep powder connects, but like I don't know how much that sleep powder missed early mana then. It only mattered in the sense that this is I now got to roost and it's a bit health is healthier, but So what do you go to here? Ricardo will go to something that doesn't allow land to get up rocks. Scarf uh, going hard Volcarona is an option here, but Oblivion has to make a plan, doesn't that Volcarona set up? So like Tangros would let the Landros get up rocks because the Landros outspeeds Tangros. But I can understand going Tangros wanting to get Regenerator. So this Tangros lifts the hit from Alakazam at this range and can fire off a knockoff which will do like 65 something along those lines. It's just a hat color.
Uh, keeping the Stangles at full would be really nice for Ricardo, so the Gengar cannot just spam Shadow Ball. As... Yeah, he did see it again, he's on phone. Like, if the Scissor is still in the bag, right, so Gengar doesn't want to click Sludge Wave, or there's an opportunity that clicking Sludge Wave with Gengar would bring the Scissor in for free and just waste a turn for Obliviate. And so... This time, uh, that makes him kind of want to go for Shadow Ball. And having the tank was healthy is important for Ricardo. To have a sort of switch into Shadow Ball. So I think he will go to Mew here. But Mew might get to a kill from... Sh Mew probably gets to a kill. So this will be HP Fire. Okay, he went for Psychic. Went for Psychic. So he wanted to get damage on this. Which is understandable, but... After Regenerator, I think Regenerator healed 33%. He will be at 58, which means he can't switch into Shadow Ball from Gengar. I think the lock-off would have done around the same as Leaf Storm did. Maybe Leaf Storm does a little more, not sure. So this time he tries to pivot from Scizor into probably Mew here. But I don't think this is burned asleep turn yet. Oh, he just wants to sack this and maybe go to Volcarona and set up. Is, he, is that what he's trying to do? Because um, Volcarona probably lives the hit, gets the equivalence off. Um, I don't think Volcarona would win yet. Especially with uh, potentially, yeah, probably Scarf Kelly in the back. Yeah, so I don't think that's what he's trying to do. So he burned his lead turn there. I was expecting Nimu to come out, but he stayed in. So he just sacked the scissor. I mean... Mm. I can, he doesn't really have a switch in, like, did he reveal the Mew set yet? Mew used... Uh, will wisp and Rocks. Set Misclick. Misclick by sacking, sacking the Scissor or Misclick going to Garchomp? Or maybe he's bluffing, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. I mean, this obviously can scare out the Alakazam as he makes a double switch, but he can Demigina. Oh, that was a Lord play. Now, they, now he gets equivalence up for free on this. But maybe he wants to just go for Fire Blast. Okay, if he's Chari Berry, I guess this wins. See, so he, he went for equivalence. We will see if he's Chari Berry. Because <laughs> I think he left the Hydro Pump. Hydro Pump does like 80, I think. Uh, we can run the cult real quick. Uh, just got Kelio versus uh, for Corona. At plus one Spadev. Hydro Pump does uh, 73 to 87. So Hydro Pump would be a roll in Ricardo's favor. But yeah, Stone Edge wouldn't kill with Charlie Berry. But yeah, we will. I don't want to miss this turn, so I will stay here. We all know it lives if it has Charity. But yeah, Pump is a roll, so I guess a little bit can go for the roll. But Pump can also miss, and the roll is not in his favor. I don't know. Volcarone is so scary in this meta game. Like, if it didn't have the 4 times rock weakness, I would say Ben is more ASAP. I would think it's HP ground on this team with uh, Fire Blast and Giga Drain. But Z Hurricane is also pretty cool, sad. Um, I don't know if people have, if it's worse for people like, like if Charlie Berry World Corona becomes more common, I don't know if people would actually consider running more attack on that Kelly to Oakwood through Charlie Berry, <laughs> like run attack EVs on Kelly. But you probably have to run on like um, 
a good amount of attack EVs and you would lose special attack to the point that Kellyus becomes kind of weak. So I don't know if that's worth it. So he predicted that Megina immaculately doubling into him. Oh yeah, this Charlie Berry. Yeah, it was kind of obvious that it was Charlie Berry from the way he played that. Kuvens again, now he can go for Giga Drain. And as Volcarona just wins, like, whew. Like that was kind of obvious. I think, I think Oblivion had to go for the roll there with. I guess he can also, hmm. Like, Stone Age has high critical hit ratio, so maybe he was going for the crit. Let me see how much they would have done. They 55. Um, so a crit would have done... I don't think a crit would have killed as it's HP ground, yep. Didn't want to risk missing the fire less than the Gengar. Completely understandable. Yeah, this... <laughs> Yeah, I will calc after the game how much attack EVs you would have to run kill, to kill, but you it's probably not even possible, because the Stone Age only did... It did nothing! Yeah, he hits the Fire Blast. And now he just clicks Giga Drain. And yeah, th Giga Drain three times should win the game here. <laughs> Bring back Talon for him. Yo, Kelly just gets Oakwood and he gets all the health back. Yeah, I missed um, Obliviate with... not Obliviate, yeah, GG Ricardo wins. I missed um, Steve Angelo versus ICT, because Steve Angelo was supposed to play Gypsy King, and Gypsy King got subbed out, because he's not gonna... I think he's asleep, and he's like in, I think, Australia, he has a different time zone, so he wasn't able to play, he was like busy all week. And like, Medibrolic sub Medibrolic subbed in ICT, and ICT... Brought a stun fist, so we have me brolic um, bringing teams. Maddie Brolic's team bringing meme teams, and Steve Angelo brought V Baton pass curse, Pyukumuku pass into and comment Blissey. Like yet Pyukumuku Baton pass into Comment Sabler and Comment Blissey, and it's Comment Sabler I got crit. And I don't know if I think he choked, but somehow he brought Steve Angelo brought the game back. Yeah, he said one with ICT here. Uh, we will run the calc real quick. Um, but it's pretty, like the Stone Edge only did like the Stone Edge did absolutely nothing. So like it's not even worth to run attack EVs. Yeah, this is timid kill. You I know this the scarf kill. You runs a minus attack nature. Which it does nine to nine to one oh, six. If you run timid, but yeah, let me pause real quick. Yeah, the nature is called hasty. I just wanted to find out what the nature is called. So if you would run max attack, kill you, you wouldn't even. Let's give this whole corona Charlie Berry. You wouldn't even kill the max attack. Like so, yeah, kill you can't even do anything about it. So this set is just gonna become a trend in tooth probably. Maybe I used it in. Maybe I used it in. OST was his Isle of League. Um, I don't want to say he invented it. I, someone will probably have used it before. Or like, but I, maybe I was the first one I've seen use it, so. That's pretty cool to see. But like, what going on? It's a scary man. Like with Z moves. Like you usually expect the Z move, but now Charlie Berry become more common. So it was probably Z move Kyurem overall. So I can kind of see how Ricardo was going. He was playing with Swiss Reaper Volcarona. And it worked out, but I think um, so. The the roll was with hydro pump so 73 to 87, and the Volcarona was at 85, I think. So that was um, highly in Ricardo's favor. He could have lived that at plus ones with death. Um, let me let, let's look at the score and everything. I missed like I missed the black and white games today. I didn't really um, care enough to watch out when they happen. 
So yeah, BBC vs NJMP Ninjas is 5 and 2. That is Medibolic's team doing pretty well. Uh, Black Olivian, I don't think he's still playing with Jace days. And yeah, Ricardo won versus Oblivion. Making, um, picking up the win for the Kavai Kratos Mana, Kratos Manners. I was kind of, I pronounced that German, my bad. So yeah, they are up 5-3 versus Twin Leaf Thunders. Twin Leaf Thunders is the team by, uh, I think by Blunder. Yeah, the, no, no. Yeah, yeah, the Trinity Thunders are managed by Jirachi and Blunder, right? Right, right, and Ricardo is on the, I think he's on, yeah, he's on Anti's team. Which is, uh, they bought TTK for 41k, good god. They only have 10 players. Like, the other teams have way more players. And they bought them for like 3k, like, like cheaper players here, you see. They have, um, 8 3k players, the NJNP Ninjas, managed by Zomok and Benge. So yeah, Mandibarak's team picking up a win, then Anti's team picking up a win. Then we have a score 4 and 3 in the last series. Where Finchinator vs. Ray Scarface will uh, potentially. Not potentially, Finchinator vs. Ray Scarface will decide the last series. Uh, between the Hyas and Hygas and the Tops and Noctows, which is um, P2's team and. Damn, sorry for the sound in the background. Yeah, P2's team is facing. Um, Tokyo Toms and Poix team. So that Ray Scarfield vs. Finchinator game is super hype and will decide. Uh, Ray Scarfield is um, maintained on SPL. We will see if he can stand up to the high expectations, if that makes any sense. Then, yeah, Finch is gonna try to pick up the win with Red Dead Games hype. Stay tuned for that. I think it should be happening in the next few hours, like two hours. But yeah, I might upload it like uh, way later. I hope I will be able to catch it. And yeah, cool win with Volcarona. Shout out to Ricardo. Um, played that. Like that double into Volt just steal the game for him. Like maybe Oblivion could have made a different play. But I guess it was kind of hard for him to expect that double switch. A double switch was just planned immaculately. Thank you guys for watching and I'm out. A lot more content coming so stay tuned for that piece. <laughs>